It's the nation's favourite antiques expert. All right, fair enough. It's a really cute subject. Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> Make it so. Here we go. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Frankly terrifying. <laughs> The aim Ooh. to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. I've lost money. There'll be worthy winners. <laughs> Get in there! And valiant losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? Ooh. Or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Giddy up. Welcome back to Scotland and another sitting of our little mutual appreciation society. Enjoying my trip with you, my dear? Oh, no, you're not. I am. Stop it. Uh. Stop it, my dear. <laughs> you guessed it, our complimentary couple in the classic coupe are Cooper, Margie, <laughs> and at the wheel, Raskin Sharp, Natasha. <laughs> This is the first time, actually, we've driven with the roof on. All of a sudden, it's warm in here. Oh, uh, I'm happy. It's still a smasher. It certainly is. And speaking of hoods, did you know that the Mercedes 190 SL was also the motor with which Grace Kelly transported Frank Sinatra in the movie High Society? <laughs> well, did you ever? Now you do. Gosh, these wipers are a bit noisy, aren't they? What's that? <laughs> She is over 60 years old, I suppose. I mean, the car, not Margie. Hence, no seatbelts, having been manufactured before they were compulsory. <laughs> Can I just say, driving around the countryside in a classic car is very Brian Aldridge. Oh, is it? Very Brian Dramatic. Are you ready? Hey! Oh, who's your favourite character in the Archers? I don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Archers fan Natasha from Glasgow, an auctioneer. That's IKEA. He's also a Gemini. In fact, it's her middle name. Whilst Tori and Margie, a dealer from Cheshire, <laughs> former model, <laughs> is more of a goggle box gal. Flipping Laura. Has been known to answer to Faye. F-A-Y-E. Now, that's quite posh. I'm going to call you Margie Faye from now on. <laughs> Margie Faye started off with £200 and lost a bit at that first auction. She now has £154.48. While Natasha Gemini, who began with the same sum, has done a wee bit better and currently boasts £210.52p. So, it's all to play for on the second leg of the Caledonian Canter. So, lovely scenery, lovely companion, lovely car. Just need some profit. <laughs> Indeed. Their journey began at Balfron Station and they ambled towards Ayrshire. They're now heading back up north before dipping south again into the lakes and Lancashire where their final auctions in Shropshire. The Scottish countryside. <laughs> Breathe in. <sighs> Well, the windows are closed, but... <laughs> Today's goodies are heading to auction over the border in Broughton Astley in Leicestershire. But we begin in Moffat. The delightful toffee capital which boasts the world's narrowest hotel, where Natasha, having dropped her chum off... Backing up. ..is about to experience the amply proportioned Lothlorien Emporium. Oh, that's nice. An old-fashioned bell. That's cool. Not for hello. sale, though. Oh, hello, Linda, isn't it? Hello, Natasha. Nice to see you again. It's lovely to see you again. I think last time I was here, I made a profit. You did, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Do you foresee another one for me? Absolutely. So, with Linda's prophecy ringing in her ears... That's so cool. Let the rummage begin. I absolutely love this kind of place because it is just full of stuff that you could find useful. Like, if you live at number 50, here's your 50, you're sorted. If you just have a spot for a wee hook for your coat, here is a box marked Coat Hooks Mixed. They've come from houses that are being stripped out or schools and things like that. I mean, look at this. You have that little nook in your house that you just think would be perfect for hanging up your coat when you come in. Yes, this has seen better days, but you're not going to find that hook in the hardware shop, which is a really nice original sort of deco looking thing. It just adds a tiny little pizzazz to that tiny wee corner. Hey, didn't Grace Kelly have one of those too? What is that? Is that actually a lamp? Oh, yes, that 
says, I love that. I'm not into yachting whatsoever. I don't know anything about sailing. I barely know my port from the starboard, but it's only 39 pounds. I feel like that's a bit of a goer actually, because it's a piece of oak. It's really nicely modeled purely because it's so simple. These lovely wee enameled metal um, portholes. Is that what you call them, portholes? They're so cute. Yes, they are rather, aren't they? Plus, there's an awful lot of mariners out there. And this part here is the only bit that sort of is a little bit of a peek behind the curtain because everything else has such a nice finish. But then there's this bit at the top here, which is exposed, carved wood. You can actually see how it's been done by hand. It's not been machine turned. But I think that this isn't shed work. I think this has been nicely manufactured. It's just a little too refined to have been made by someone in their shed. The fitting underneath the shade, the fitting for the bulb, is Bakelite. So it's got that lovely mottled finish. And then there's just a really nice varnish, almost patina on this oak. And here you have this switch. That's also Bakelite. So age-wise, are we in the 1930s? Are we in the 1940s? It's hard to say for sure. As it turns out, the wire's broken anyway. So <laughs> it does require rewiring. I think it needs a wee flag at the top. I think that's what it's missing. Linda did say, come back if you need some help. I think I definitely need help on the price. I can't believe I like that. Maybe I need help. Let's leave her musing in Moffat and catch up with her companion in the town of Castle Douglas, birthplace of the splendidly named late Scottish actor Brown Darby. And there's proprietor Kirsty. Right, 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 right. Aye, aye, look, a yacht. I wonder if Margie will be keen. Oh, look at this little chap. Bless him. Look. Oh, he's having a little doze. What's wrong with... How he's supposed to look like that? Look, he's got his little head reclined on his little arm. Look. He's got a purpose. He's a pyjama case. And if we look at his little foot, he's from quite a well-known company called Merrythought, who uh, began in the 1930s. Hmm. Quite unusual to see a monkey. They're usually teddies. Mary Thought are now Britain's last remaining teddy bear manufacturer. Well, I reckon he's quite old, isn't he? He's in pretty good nick, apart from his little feet and his little hands, which is a bit strange, really, because the rest of him is really good. And he is £48. <laughs> are you worthy of a punt? Hey, look at me when I'm talking to you. Can I have a word with you about this? Yes. Kirsty, this little chap, he's £48. You know, how much could he be? We could take £10 off him for you. Mm. Can I have a little think? Because yes. I've seen one or two other things. OK. 38, that's it, not 35? Yeah, we could do 35 for you, Marjorie. Right. He's, I'm, I'm liking him even more now. Monkey business almost concluded. <laughs> Let's get off to Moffat, where Natasha's moored the lamp. Now has designs on the silver. I didn't know how that would open. That's fancy. I know. I love that. Look at the wee bagpipe. Yeah, that's the one. So a silver brooch. Is it marked for silver? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And I think with Scottish silver, you wouldn't expect it to be marked any other way than just silver. Yes, very often it's just marked silver. Yeah. I quite like it. It's, it's quite just nice. a nice piece. So if you're looking for the oldest things mm. in the cabinet, you're probably looking at the cutlery, right, the spoons. Okay. I mean, I've never really considered spoons. Is there anything that you think could do all right at auction? Well, the Glasgow Hallmark, 1893. Mm. Still with the gilding. Yeah, lovely condition. Kind of a condiment spoon. Yes, probably a mustard or a relish. Mm -hmm. And there's a pear. There's a pear. And they're Glasgow. May I have a wee look? Of course. Thank you very much. That Hallmark includes elements of the city's fish-themed coat of arms. Rather fun. I like it though, actually, to have the parcel gilding still intact is uh -huh. nice, isn't yep. it? And there's two of them. There are two, well, 58 pounds in total. Oh, I don't but know. But if you wanted them, you could have the two for 35. Really? That's very generous. Okay, so they can be 35. Uh, are you familiar with a wooden sailboat lamp? <laughs> oh, yes, I know the one you mean. Couldn't be more different. Um, <laughs> that is marked up at £39. OK. You've been awfully generous with this. Is there any wiggle room on the boaty lamp? Yes. Oh, there is. OK. okay. Um, I think we could do that for 25 
25 plus 35 is 60 pounds. Go on then. Let's Very do good. it, Linda. Thanks, Linda. Now let's grab the good ship table lamp. There we are. Match oh, you got them. Check and set out for the next shop. OK, here we go. Don't Ooh. forget to buy some toffee first, though. Back to Castle Douglas, where Margie's monkeys are maybe. Always drawn to these because my grandmother had one. It's a tantalus, and I used to think they were fascinating because you couldn't get at the bottles unless you have the key, and the person who has the key is the owner or the butler who would be trusted. Uh, you couldn't get the bottles out because, you know, people, the staff might just fancy a nip while they're sweeping and hoovering. <laughs> So tantalus was a great idea. And um, I think it's from the verb to tantalise, because you're tantalised, yet you can't get the bottles out. But my granny's was always empty. <laughs> Signs are, she may be after something else. I'm looking at a brass plaque with antiques and furniture department. So that's been in a store somewhere, hasn't it? I'm looking for safe bets <laughs> to get me out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, look. Hmm, I really like that. Do you think that's a better buy than the monkey? You could always have both. How much is it? It is 45, I think. Cursed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Archie. Yeah. Quite you like, like that. the sign? I do, yeah, I like yeah. signs. So what could that be? Um, for the two of them together, 35 Six. on the monkey. Um, and the sign's 45, so yeah, what would you yeah. offer in both of them together? Would 60 do the deal? Oh, I was thinking 70. 65? Yeah, we could do a deal at 65. Oh, Thank you very much okay. indeed. Nicely done. Now down to about 90 pounds, though. That's all I've got left. Spend it wisely. OK. Bye-bye, Margie. And your cheeky monkey. Hello, Natasha. How's the motor? I'm trying to get up this hill. It's all about the clutch control. I kind of feel like that's a bit of a metaphor. I'm not in top gear by any stretch of the imagination. I have made a firm £10 or so after the first auction. But I'm in second gear. I've moved it up one tiny bit more money in the kitty. And I'm getting up those hills, if you know what I mean, metaphorically. And I have to admit, I don't think Margie will like me saying this, but I have to admit, I don't think she likes being Fine. <laughs> Rappy Burns would be proud. I wonder if he was ever in the village of Whiston. Probably. This will do it. Yep, keeping on the sunny side. More metaphor. And inside sunny side, there's quite a few very nice antiques. Look at that. I don't pretend to know a huge amount about furniture. In fact, I know very little about furniture, but I know that I love OG chess. I would think that we would all aspire to one day have a house in which the proportions of this chest would be appropriate. I mean, absolutely stunning. You can house a lot in these, and they're survivors. I mean, it's absolutely massive, a serious piece of wood. Serious skill goes into making these, and that's why you have these apprentice pieces. Same materials, same age, but all very much scaled down. OG, spelt O-G-double-E, -E, is synonymous with this serpentine curved shape. This one, the proper functioning OG chest, is 400 odd, and this one, the smaller apprentice piece, is 800 odd. So you can't even say it's half the size and twice the price. It's about, what, a 50th of the size and twice the price? It's quite funny to see them one on top of the other. It really helps to drive that home. Same age, same style, same materials, huge price differential. I can afford neither of them, but still, it's nice to dream. And to dream about the house in which this would fit too. Natasha's funds currently stand at a smidge above £150. Cue a visit to the slightly more economical department next door. Yeah, this is maybe more my price range. And that is a... Is it wrong to say it? That's quite a sexy saw. That is a serious saw. Sheffield is what I would expect, but in fact it says Philadelphia, USA. Henry Diston and Sons, cast steel warranted. It's a lovely piece of steel, brass bracket at the top here. 
I think that's an oak handle. And it's got the lovely original brass screws as well. So for whatever reason, <laughs> I feel like I really like the saw. It has no price. I'm not very good at this, but I might just make an offer. I could just say, see your saw. I'll give you a 10 and see what happens. <laughs> good plan. She likes it here. Ha ha. I have always fancied buying one of these domes. You rarely get the chance, but that's because antique shop owners, they don't like to give them away, generally. They like to have them so that when something comes in that can go inside, they can display it more fittingly. And I'm loving that. There's no price on it. <sighs> I'm gonna pick it up. I, the, the glass is so thin. It's, it's paper thin. Yeah. I mean, it, it, just, it freaks me out because it just weighs nothing. Can you hear that? It almost sounds like plastic. It's so thin. This is a hand-blown dome. The dead giveaway is this great big bubbles of air. There's a great big one there and a couple of smaller ones. Here's Mark, the proprietor. Hi, Natasha. How are you getting on? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just looking at two very disparate items. <laughs> the two things I'm interested in don't seem to have prices on them. It's the dome over there with the stand and the saw. I can sell the saw for 30. 30 pounds. And I can do the dome for 60. For 60. You wouldn't do the two for 70? <laughs> I'll go 75. Oh, do you know what? I think I'll chance my arm. I've bought neither a saw nor a dome before. So go on, £75. Lovely. That's lovely. That's quite a bit more than she wanted. That's 20 for the saw and 55 for the dome. Let's hope the bidders like them, like they said in the movie. Who wants to be a millionaire? Do you like a Keeley? I'd love a Keeley, but I can never spell it. It's a strange spelling, isn't it? C-E-I-L-I-D-H. That's right. Well, why Is that just, right? Yeah, why not just put K-A-L-E-Y? That's Kaylee. Kaylee. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's excellent. Nighty night, you two. Today, we start out very close to the Ayrshire coast, a golfing hotspot in the country that invented it. It seems to be a game that exasperates people. I know. You know, it's, it, you're putting a ball in a little hole, but it's jolly difficult, isn't it? That's what they say. <laughs> in a nutshell, Margie's shopping yesterday was equally economical, with a brass plaque and a monkey pyjama case acquired in short order. Are you worthy of a punt? Meaning she still has just under £90 to spend today, while Natasha bought quite a lot more. A Victorian glass dome, some silver spoons, a tenon saw and a boat-shaped lamp. I love that. Leaving her with £75 and change to take to the shops. <laughs> if they ever get there. That's it. Oh, you're going to keep me alive. How do you do? You're going to have to teach me how you do that. Just listen to it. You listen to the engine. I don't have the intuition. <laughs> Quite. Margie's in charge of the Merc whispering today. Later on, their items will be off to Leicestershire for the auction, but today's first stop is beside the Scottish seaside in Prestwick. Bit blowy, isn't it? <laughs> nice calm day in Scotland. I wonder if it was like this in 1960 when, while refuelling at the local airport, Elvis stepped onto UK soil for the one and only time. And then there's Margie, look, not at all shook up, at Nisi New. What a name. Got the place to herself, look. Fantastic. Come here. Oh. Oops, steady. There's stuff everywhere. <laughs> oh, what are those? Are they milk chains? Oh, you should always look up when you're in an antique shop. They look quite interesting. Gary? Yep. Wherefore art thou, Gary? <laughs> I'm in Hayding. What are these? Are these farming milk chains or something? Yes. I got eight uh, last week. I've got four left. Where did you get them from? A farm? Yeah, somebody had moved into a farm and they were having a bit of a tidy out. Oh. There's another one down there. These are stainless steel. Yeah, oh. Shame. How much are they? 35. Yeah. If they're a bit older, I'd probably be more interested. Some milk. 
no, that's too plain. Oh, come on. Just £89 left to spend, remember? Gary, I'm struggling a bit. No, have you not got anything in your office? <laughs> a bit beer in here just now. Um, what have you got? Hunting cups. Yeah. Danish. Oh, yeah, they're quite they're nice. Quite sweet. Yeah. Um, pens. Nice things. Pens, yeah, have you got pens? pens? Yeah, I like pens. Mm -hmm. All right, it's a nice collection, yeah? Waterman's, Conway Stewart. And yeah. The other ones are a bit more run-of-the-mill. Right, so uh, those are pretty good, and these are just sort of packing it out. Yep. So I'll just say goodbye to the turquoise blue one. No bother. Right, and that's a Parker too. Yep. And that's a Parker... Parker pencil. Pencil. I always like fountain pens, and I bought them before. And it's a good collector's market. So we've got the green one, which is the British one, and that's the Conway Stewart. Very nice pens and stylish little bands there. Mm -hmm. The gold nib, the lever action to fill it. The tortoiseshell one, a bit, bit chunkier. That's the Parker, as we all know that name, don't we? Yes, my lady. Founded in Janesville, Wisconsin, in 1888. And this sort of purpley red one is a waterman, again, American. And there's your lever action. Yeah, they're not antiques, but 60, 70 years old. And they look fabulous. I think there's some mileage in those. Sounds like a deal could be imminent. So, yeah, go on. Hit me. <laughs> to give you a fighting chance, 30. Well, that seems pretty fair, doesn't it? It certainly does. For those three fancy pens, plus a few others thrown in. <laughs> Lovely. But while Margie ventures back out into the storm, we'll head further up the Ayrshire coast, where it's also blowing a gale, to catch up with Natasha at Irvin Harbour, moving seamlessly from shopping to shipping, or perhaps, more accurately, to the Scottish National Maritime Museum, don't you know? where one famous designer's yachts are not only preserved, but also restored to their former glory. Meet museum director, David Mann. Oh, nice. Look at that. Hello, David. Hi. Hello, Natasha. How are you doing? Very well, you? I'm very well. I'm happy to be standing in front of Powerful. That is her name. Yes, she's <laughs> Powerful. Built and designed in 1900 by William Fife the third. Uh, in Fairley along the coast from here. She's a fantastic vessel, an Ayrshire yacht builder that became internationally known. If William Fife the Third designed Powerful, what about William Fife First and Second? Were they involved in this business? William Fife the First started the business, building some work crafts and fishing boats. And when that business was kind of struggling a little bit, William Fife the Third took it on and moved it into this area of designing yachts. So he was really quite prominent in changing the way yachts were racing, how fast yachts could go. Fife's reputation was such that he twice built vessels which tea magnate Sir Thomas Lipton challenged for the America's Cup. Like this one, Shamrock the Third, launched in 1903. Magnificent. He took a, a very scientific approach to how he built the boats and the hydrodynamics. So, as you can see, she's got uh, a short distance on the water line, but a long distance overall, giving her a faster speed. He was very influential in putting sails up, lots of sails. He would put as much sail on them as they could so that they could go much faster. It's all about the design, it's all about the build quality. His boats were always described as fast and bonny. Uh, how nice the, is the that? Term. I know, it's lovely. The better they looked, the more people wanted them and the more they developed them. Of course, this part of Scotland is also justly famous for the huge ocean liners that were built on the Clyde in the 19th and 20th centuries. But, as the museum's varied collection shows, Scots and their boats go much further back. Being a, a, an island nation, to transport goods, to do all that kind of work, we, we needed the boat. So there were boat building yards everywhere. In this area, right up to the Northern Isles, very little wood, so they would make boats out of driftwood to make sure that they could get from island to island. These skills have really gone into decline. There are now fewer shipyards doing this kind of work than there have ever been. So it was, that's why we started the boat building school, so that we've got a generation that can help us look after the boats that we have in our collection. One of the restoration projects taken on by the Boat Building School is this little beauty. The Vagrant, from 1884, is the oldest surviving Fife yacht in the world. 
you've got to take it all the way back, right back to the, the, the bare bones, replace everything that that's could rot, that's going to rot, working with it, keeping as much as you can so that you've got as much integrity as possible. So a lot of the planking's original, uh, some of the frames will be original, Kiel's original, and we'll work through that. She'll look fantastic when she's finished it. She'll hopefully attend a, a Fife regatta in her day. Maybe not in the water, but we'll certainly have her on show. And just to prove that boat building is almost certainly in the blood of every true Scot, it's time for Natasha to test her maritime metal. Brace yourselves. So this is the main workshop area. This is where the apprentices would come in and train. And this is Connor, and Connor's working on a... Hi, Connor. Hi. Connor's working on an apprentice piece, making a paddle. So he's going to teach you how to spoke, use the spoke shave and smooth this off. That's what we'll get you to do. Is, uh, can I hold it there with your thumbs at the back, fingers on the front? OK. And you're just looking to light it. Running it up. And just spoke yep, shave just away from spoke me. Spoke shave away. <laughs> OK, of so course. Well, that's, that's right. you know, that's what I do. Uh, so yep. it was like that. Yep, thumbs at the back, fingers on the front there. And you're just looking to keep this as kind of flat as you can. And then just... So, so thumbs down there. Yep. And then fingers, fingers at the, the top. top there, yep. Flat to the bottom. And then... Oh, oh, I'm feeling there. it. Yep. Just oh, like that. Oh, good shave. Just like that. OK, hold on. Oh, that is so satisfying. Not so much plain sailing as, um, oh, forget it. And could you just do that for hours? You could. There's not much left of the paddle, but you could do it, yeah. <laughs> Good point, Connor. But we now present the further adventures of Margie Cooper, antiques expert and weather woman. As you can see, the weather is very blustery. So it's making life a little bit more difficult. Even the car doesn't seem to like it. <laughs> well, as beautiful as she is, she's really quite hard to drive. <laughs> Come on, love. <laughs> Sport next. But first, Margie's making for the Lanarkshire village of Overtown and the Garion Bridge Antique Centre. <laughs> Natasha will be along very shortly, but for now, she's on her own. Just under £60 left, Margie. What is this? What is it? Oh! <laughs> it's a musical decanter. Why would you want a musical decanter? <laughs> so while you're pouring your drink, she got music playing. Very odd. What will they think of next? I don't even know what it's playing. Oh, it's still going. £24. Oh, it's all there, look. It's still going. Made in Sweden. But of course. Oh. And she's here already, look. Let's find some strange things in antique centres. Where is Hello? Wait, oh. look, here, look here. You're looking for a You're discount. You're so weird. <laughs> look at dress for dinner. Oh, can I come in? You can. Viva Las Vegas. I think I'm Elvis, right? With Margie is Anne Margaret. <laughs> Take a selfie. Now, do let's be sensible. Eyes down. Ooh. Don't usually like pewter, but it's Tudric, and Tudric makes it special pewter. It's a lovely design that was solely sold in Liberties, which was opened in about the 1870s. And they started to make Tudric wares in about 1900 up to about the 1930s. Tudric's chief exponent was the great arts and crafts designer, Archibald Knox. Very collectible, lovely shape. And the price is 18 pounds. 18 pounds Tudric. That should be about 30 or 40 pounds, surely. Shall I, uh, shall I have that? Well, I don't see why not. Over to Greg, eh? Greg, can I disturb Hello. you? Hey, how are you? I'm all right. I'm excellent. Uh, right, I've seen that. OK. I mean, it's a reasonable price. I'm not going to haggle, but... Right, yeah. seeing it's you, I'll do it for 10. Oh, thank you for that. Excellent, that thank definitely. you very much. I've seen another item in a cabinet. Excellent, do you want to see what Crikey, quick work, Marge. But I was drawn to this cabinet. Could it be that sign? It could be that, <laughs> yes. 50% off. <laughs> let's have a look. Let's have a look. That, and that, little that locket here, yeah. no problem. And that is how much? Let us see how much this one is. Well, this one is 20. <gasps> it's yours for 10. 
that's plate. But I think the locket just might be silver. Mm. That looks like silver to me. So it doesn't the, yeah, feel just a, like plate. It looks, can't it see looks, them all. No, I can't see one, but... I think I might just gamble. That's quite nice. But even a silver plated one. It really is a very nice one, that. I'll go on, I'll have this. I have that. keep dithering. <laughs> it's not good to dither. <laughs> Certainly not for ten pounds. Nothing like fifty percent off. <laughs> it's all in <the> nice. <laughs> so that's one happy customer. That's quite cool. That's quite cool. Um, that has to be for a kid, doesn't it? The proportions of that desk are really small, but it's a strange one. Because... Oh, look at that! It has a mirror. Oh, wow, that's quite luxury, is it not? For a kid to have their own dressing table. Well, imagine if you were a wee boy or a wee girl and you were getting ready in your room and you could put all your little lotions and potions and hair gels. Oh, there is a stag. I don't think of stag when I think of a mid-century child's dressing table, but that's cool. Stag designers John and Sylvia Reed favoured recessed grips over handles. And the best thing about it the absolutely best thing about it is down there, it's just what you want from kind of 50s furniture, that tapered conical leg. What did it say on the label? Child's wooden mid-century dressing table, £35. Uh, yeah. I, I foresee a battle between the dealer in vintage furniture and the parents looking for a place for their kid to get ready in the morning. And if they're willing to battle it out, to be good money out. Oh, Greg. Hello, we haven't Hi met there. Tasha. Hi, uh, pleased to meet you, Greg. Lovely <laughs> to meet you, Greg. Thank you. I'm hoping to save you a trip up to the other side of the centre. OK, yeah. Um, I took a couple of snaps. Uh, this is the item I'm looking at. It is a child's dressing table for £35. OK, do. so it's 35 What about 25 uh, yeah, 25. 25. Cool. Awesome. Thank you much. <laughs> All done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, wrap up, you two. Is it still raining? It certainly is. Oh, it is. Hold on, I'll oh. go around. I'm freezing. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> Looks cosy in the car, though. Smileys. Here we come. <laughs> Wipers. <laughs> Woo! Wipers. Off we go. Next, shut eye, please. It's auction time in Broughton Astley in Leicestershire, claimed locally to be the largest village in England. And why not? Here at Sutton Hill Farm Country Auctions, buyers will only be bidding online or on the phone. Auctioneer James Moulds is the man in charge. What does he think about Margie's canny five lots, which only set her back £115? Now the pens, I think they will do quite well. Plenty of collectors for pens, and this is quite a nice lot. Oh, the Mary Thorpe pajama case, yes. Um, unfortunately, with this item, the condition is everything. And I'm not expecting it to make too much money, but you never know. Mm. Now, Tasha paid £160 for her lots. Thoughts, James? The stag dressing table, this could be quite a surprise. I would expect this one to make between £80 and £120. The silver mustard spoons, uh, Again, an item, very collectible. Silver items always do well in this auction. You'd expect those to make a reasonable price. Good oh. After setting out from Moffat in the borders, our pair have wound up in the absolutely gorgeous Lake District and a fabulous day for a walk. Morning, Margie. Good morning. How are you? You've chosen an amazing spot. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Have you cleared your head? I have. I've had a wander. Time to pull up and tune in and see how their items get on. Are you ready for this? I am ready. I don't know if I am. Uh, well, shall we synchronise? Synchronising. Synchronising. Right, count us in. Three, two, two one, one, go! go on. And first off the blocks is Tasha's kiddie retro dressing table. Mid-20th century delight. A definite profit. De no, no, you've just, that's a kiss of death. Thanks no, no, very much, Margie definite Cooper. Definite profit. Definite profit. Must be worth £100. It should be. Come on, £50. No interest? Oh, goodness sake. So I'll be at 40 then. Stag, it's a stag. Yeah. Oh, I feel Collectible. like 40's about right. 40 pounds at 45 anyway. Oh, 40's bid. Good, 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 good. That's about 45 right. 45 anyway. 45. 45. 45. 50? 50 pounds. 55? A 55 pound bid. Cheap though, isn't it? We all settled then. Last chance then. Working profit, my love. At 55. 
lively start on the internet for Tasha. Oh, I'm so tough. Oh, good. It's Margie's posh pens next. They're going to do all right, these. I know, I can feel it in my water. <laughs> and the internet's raced away at 75 bits. There you go! 75 oh, the bits sorry. in the UK. At 75, at 80 anywhere. Margie! 75, we all done. You're on fire. 80. 80 pounds with Deb, thank you. 85 with you. Marvellous. At 85, at 90 anywhere. Oh! At 85, oh, we all finished. At 85, and I'm selling then. Hammers down at 85, the UK okay, Well at done, Mr. Auctioneer. Well done, Margie. <laughs> nice little earners. Nice work. Not laughing now, are no. you? No. Oh, that's good. Will Tasha's condiment spoons also cut the mustard? Ha! Right, here we go. A nice bit of Scottish silver. Yeah. At £25 pounds for the two spoons. 30. All right. 30. Hold on. That's close. £30 pounds the bid. £30. Pounds. Pounds. Oh, no. At £30, pounds, are we all 35? done? They're worth more than that. At £35, we all done? You've been a bit unlucky there. I think so, Natasha. £35. Pounds. What a shame. But at least it's even Stevens. Well, my pulse wasn't racing, there. but I think I've just flatlined. That's sad. That is sad. And talking of sad, Margie's animal-shaped PJ case is looking, well, deceased, really. Oh, it's your monkey. <laughs> Mary thought, what could yeah, go wrong? Yeah, nothing can go wrong. Aye, aye. Surely £20 for it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Thank you, £20 bid. At £20 at £25 anyway. £25. £25 with Debbie still. At £25... Oh, come on, collectors of Mary thought. At 25, are we all done? Are we? Surely. At 25... We all finished there. I can't watch. We all done. Bids at 25 only. Oh, well, that's a disappointment. Fingers crossed he's going to a good home. Never mind. At least he's sold. The day is young. Righto. Tasha's novelty Art Deco lamp is up next. What yacht to love? I think it's... 1950s kitsch. Or a yachting family. <laughs> We want this in the family room. £20 bid on commission. Oh, 20 £20's bid. 30 with the UK. <gasps> 30. At £30, we all done. 35? 35, thanks, Dad. I think that's on the phone. 35 at 4, Jenny. At 35 is the bid. At 35. I mean, you can't three. complain. It's not for everyone. We all finished then. Hammer's going down at 35 £35. Pounds. She's back to winning ways with £10 more in the kitty. A small profit for a That's, small yacht. <laughs> no, I think it was more of a boat. Now, now, you two. Here's Margie's brass plaque from a department store, probably. Right, hold on, what did you pay for this plaque? £30. Oh, you're off your head. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> £20 at 25 anyway. 25. Here we go, here we go. 30. Thank you. £30 the bid on the internet. 30 £35. Pounds. 35 bid. 40. Anyway. Profit. £40 bid. 45 This is a good watch. <laughs> At forty pounds, and I'm selling. Oh, at good. Forty pounds. Hammers down at forty pounds only. With that extra ten pounds, Margie may be edging ahead. I'm happy with a profit of any kind at all. A profit, even if it's a pound, is a profit. Okay. Here's Tasha's twentieth-century American saw. Second thoughts, anyone? If you were at an auction. Would you be taken by a saw? Well, no, I wouldn't. No. 18 pounds a week. It's close, bed. close. At 18 pounds at 20. Somebody wants it. At 18 pounds a commission bid. At 18 pounds, we're all done. 20. 20. 20. So 20 pounds at 25 anywhere. Go on. At 20 pounds the bid. Hammers down then. At 20 pounds only. Yikes. That's another break even for Tasha. What can I say? <sighs> Next. Yes, ma'am. Margie bought this arts and crafts vase for a pinch. Right, ready for the Tudric pewter? Yeah. Here we go. Right, come on, Tudric pewter. You vase. only paid ten pounds, for goodness' sake. Twenty pounds. Let's get on. Yeah, go 20 on. Bid. Twenty-five at thirty anywhere. Thirty. Thirty bid. Thanks for Deb's bid at thirty. Nice work. Thirty-five bid at forty anywhere. Forty-five. Forty-five bid at fifty anywhere. Fifty pounds. Go on. Last chance there. 55. 55. Oh. 60, 60. 60 bid. 65. How's your ticker? That's exciting. At 60 pounds and I'm selling. Last chance. Yeah. Oh, just in time. That's great. Oh, he's going 70. on again. <laughs> 65's the bid. 65 at 70 anywhere. <gasps> at 65 and I'm selling this time. Don't miss it. At 65. Look at that, eh? Nice work. Yeah. 
great stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased about that. Tasha's final item is the hand-blown Victorian display dome. I love this dome. I would take the dome home, <laughs> for sure. Happily it's take the dome going, home. It's going. It's under the hammer, and here we go. We have a bid from the UK at £25 bid. I mean, I was all excited then. I have £30 on commission. Keep going. £40 at 45 the bid's in the UK. 50 on commission. Oh, 50 on commission. 55 in the UK. Profit. Oh, he's out. £60 at 65 anywhere. 65 still with the UK. At 70? 70. 70 bid, thank you. You've got us all good. 75 anywhere. At 75? Oh, we've made 20. 20. At 80 pounds bid anywhere. Yes, bid. At 80 pounds. <gasps> at 80 pounds. <gasps> you got 80. But it's worth every single penny. 90. At 85, still in the UK. At 85, at 90 anywhere. Go on. So we all done? I'm selling then at 85 pounds. Hey, that's a welcome top up for Tasha's decreasing coffers. Ho ho! Well done. Yes. 30 pounds profit. Oh, I'm so chuffed. Yeah, well done. You Good. don't mean that. I'm <laughs> not doing too bad. I do, I do, I do. Honest, I do. Honest, honest. Liar. Ha! <laughs> but it's Margie's last item of the day now a Victorian pendant and chain. And there's very little between the two of them. So it's exciting. <sighs> right, let's see what happens. At £30 at 35 anywhere. At £30 a bid is with the... 35. 35 with Deb. Oh, my goodness. 45? 45. Thank you. 45. Oh, 55. 55 at 60. Oh my goodness. 60 with the UK. 65? 65. 65 at 70? That's at nice. 65 pounds done. 65 pounds of hammers down there. Oh, that's at brilliant. Well done. I like this option here. It goes and sells then. At 65 pounds. That's another lovely profit for Margie. We're done. That's hard to call, actually. No, I don't, I don't wish to boast or upset you, <laughs> but I think I might have got you this time. Do you know, I think she might be right. Natasha started the leg with 210 pounds, 52p, and has increased her pot a smidgen after auction costs to 239 pounds and 32p. Margie began a little behind with £154 and 48p. But after auction costs today, has £269 and 8 pence and has shot into the lead. The battle is on. <laughs> I'm the one with the car keys. What do you reckon? Should we go for a ride? No, I'm going to enjoy the view. In fact, I'm going for a walk. You can go and celebrate with the sheep. Bah, bah. You too. Who writes this stuff? <laughs>